Hello, and welcome to our series on installing Cycle with Habitat Home Utilities. In this episode, Jean-François Laurent walks through the third step, installing solar and the XP0 package for your new Cycle instance. So we're going to start off where we left off with the prerequisites video. And after restarting the virtual machine with all the prerequisites, which is very important, we will open up Visual Studio Code and the, uh, we'll open the folder as a workspace um, to the utilities repo. So we have uh, downloaded the sitecore.habitathome.utilities, put that in the projects folder, and now we're going to open Visual Studio Code and open up the utilities project. In here, we'll take a look at a few things, um, uh, mainly how to get started with setting up your configuration in preparation for the install. The installer uses a configuration-xp0.json file, which gets generated through these PowerShell scripts. And the first script that does a lot of work is set installation defaults. The next one is the set installation overrides PS1 example, which we want to rename to PS1. In the overrides is typically the most often overridden values. So you get to set your prefix, which will give you another name. You could add additional bindings if you had multi-site configuration to install. And this is, of course, in, in more elaborate installs. Uh, and finally, of course, the, the solar and SQL Server um, settings are also in the overrides. So generally, you don't need to modify the installation defaults file. You just override it. but uh, you override it using the overrides values. Um, so you always have to run the defaults first and then the overrides will uh, modify the configuration XP0 file. As you can see in the repo here, we're looking at 8721 as a solar port. That's my port of choice for solar 721. Uh, we do have a solar installer as well. And uh, as you can see here, of course, 8721 is the port that I, I configure it on. So we're going to first install solar because that hasn't been done yet. And of course we do that through PowerShell. So we're gonna open up a Windows PowerShell window again as administrator. And we're going to uh, navigate over to the solar folder first and we'll run through the solar install. Uh, the prerequisites that we ran earlier installed the JRE, which we need, the Java Runtime Environment, which we need for this. So um, as you can see now, we're going to download Solar. Uh, it uses uh, NSSM um, as the service creation tool. And once that's all done, the Solar window will open up the, in a browser of your choice. So now Solar is installed uh, with SSL, and now it's time to start um, getting our configuration file ready for the Sitecore install. So we're going to run the set installation defaults and set installation overrides files in PowerShell again, and that will generate the configuration XP0. The install single developer file also defaults to configuration XP0. Of course, as you can see, these are all parameterized and you can choose your own file names, which means you can also have multiple configurations set up for your own use. So now we're in the uh, XP install, we've run set installation defaults, and we're going to run the set installation overrides. And if we take a look at the configuration XP0, it's a very elaborate uh, JSON file that uh, I've created to help um, handle multiple scenarios uh, over and above a simple install. Uh, this will uh, basically have the, the path to all of the packages, including the uh, modules that are um, optional, which we'll see in a future video. And now we launch the installation. So again, because it is a uh, maybe 10 to 12 minute process, I will do some fast forwarding and we'll take a look at what's happening along the way. The scripts automatically download the Sitecore assets from dev.sitecore.net, so you will be asked for those credentials. If you already have the assets downloaded, then feel free to just put in a fake username and password. So you'll save some time by uh, downloading that uh, if you're doing multiple installs and putting it somewhere 
uh, where you can get it from a local source. And uh, don't forget to copy the license into the assets folder. That's also very important. And once the assets, um, once the license file is back into the right spot, which is XP install assets, then I can trigger another installation. And this time, despite asking me for my credentials, it has already downloaded the items and it will skip that step. Despite the fact that I have fast forwarded the video, I haven't interrupted the timeline. So feel free to take a look at the timestamp to see how long the installation took. As a recap, the installer from the utilities repo uses a configuration XP0 file, a JSON file which gets created by uh, setting some defaults using a PowerShell script, as well as setting some overrides using a PowerShell script. I hope this makes it easier for everyone to install in multiple scenarios. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned for more episodes in this series.